Welcome to a discussion that's as hot as a Siberian summer. Today we bring you a conversation unlike any other. A dialogue that has stirred the waters of public discourse. Picture a stage set for an interview of a lifetime, a buzz with anticipation. The atmosphere is electric, the anticipation palpable. The spotlight is focused on two individuals, both extraordinary in their own realms. On one side, we have Tucker Carlson, a media personality, known for his hard-hitting style. On the other, none other than Russian President Vladimir Putin, a figure who commands attention worldwide. This a conversation between two of the most influential figures of our time, Tucker Carlson and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Putin, in his characteristic style, began the dialogue expressing optimism regarding the Ukraine conflict. He boldly asserted his viewpoint, directing his comments at the West's involvement. Cessation of the fighting, he stated emphatically, requires the termination of weapon supplies. His words insinuated that Western aid to Kyiv is fueling the conflict. His audacious pronouncement indeed hinted at a possible swift resolution to the war. A striking perspective, proposing that if the weapon supplies cease, the warfare could potentially conclude shortly. His statement, if you really want to stop fighting, you need to stop supplying weapons, culminated his argument. A bold statement indeed, suggesting that the war could be over in a few weeks. The Russian president introduced a new phrase, denazification. This term coined by him was unveiled to the international audience in the midst escalating tension. The world was curious about his intentions behind what he termed a special military operation in Ukraine. The president, in an attempt to clarify, expounded on this peculiar term. According to him, it signified the absolute prohibition of neo-Nazi movements. It was a call to cleanse society of individuals nurturing and propagating this dangerous ideology. He stated, this means the prohibition of all kinds of neo-Nazi movements, we must eliminate those who uphold this concept and strive to perpetuate it. When asked about his interactions with US presidents, Putin was swift to mention that his memory didn't serve him right about the last conversation he shared with Joe Biden. He took a second, squinting his eyes as if trying to recollect a forgotten memory, but only shook his head in a resigned manner. He then shifted the subject, an air of nostalgia surrounding his features, as he started talking about something else. His rapport with Donald Trump. He was candid enough to describe their relationship as personal, something that didn't usually happen in the political realm. He also didn't shy away from sharing his personal liking for George W. Bush, the 43rd president, a fondness that was evident in his voice. The conversation then took a fascinating turn towards Elon Musk. A revolutionary entrepreneur, who, from the perspective of Putin, seems unstoppable. Putin, a formidable world leader himself, viewed Musk with an intriguing mix of admiration and wariness. He spoke of Musk's relentless drive towards innovation and his boundary-pushing ventures into space technology. He recognized Musk's audacious dreams and the way the entrepreneur was reshaping industries. There was some surprise in his tone, a hint of disbelief perhaps, but also respect. He pontificated about the future and how men like Musk were irrevocably changing it. Putin then touched upon the speculative buzz surrounding Musk. The rumors of him implanting a chip in a human brain. One of the most significant parts of the interview revolved around Evan Gershkovich, the Wall Street Journal correspondent detained in Russia for espionage accusations. Putin, the powerful Russian leader, painted a picture of Gershkovich as more than just a journalist. According to him, the correspondent was covertly collecting confidential inside information. He alluded to ongoing conversations between the two nations' special services, implying no topic was off limits. Putin's allegations sparked global intrigue, stirring up heated discussions. He emphasized that there was no taboo to settle this issue. The conversation took an unexpected and jovial detour when Carlson piqued Putin's interest by bringing up the Nord Stream pipeline attacks that happened in the Baltic Sea in September 2022. This topic, though serious, became a source of comedic relief as Putin, with his characteristic wit, playfully suggested Carlson was the culprit. The crowd chuckled, and the atmosphere in the room lightened. Carlson, quick to retort, confidently replied with a flippant statement that got everyone laughing harder. I was busy that day. I did not blow up Nord Stream. In summary, the interview between Tucker Carlson and Russian President Vladimir Putin was a roller coaster ride, filled with bold statements, interesting revelations, and a sprinkle of humor. 
Discussions revolved around Ukraine, Putin's relationships with US presidents, Elon Musk's ventures and the Nord Stream pipeline. The dialogue was diverse, but the most pivotal part was Putin's comments on detained journalist Evan Gershkovich, a topic that will undoubtedly continue to make headlines in the days to come. Jump.